up after their victory at Cradley on Saturday. And today at Ipswich, they had the chance to clinch the five test series. Well, they came to the match in a very determined mood while England had some enforced team changes. And introducing the two teams now is our commentator, Dave Lanning. So the England lineup here at Foxhall Heath today, number one, Chris Morton from Bellevue, an ever-present, hasn't missed a test match in against the Americans. Number two, the explosive but inclined to be erratic Michael Lee from Paul Pirates. Coming into the squad for the first time in this series, Paul Woods, a very talented young man from the South Coast. And also back in the squad, the veteran John Tiger Louis from Kingsland, former Ipswich captain. Number five, Dave Jessup takes over the England captaincy with the enforced absence of Kenny Carter through a leg injury. And at number six, Kelvin Tatum, a young man, young rider of the year with Wimbledon last year. The reserves both on their initial outings for England, local lads Richard Knight and Jeremy Doncaster. Moving across to the American squad, well, it's unchanged. It leads to one. A feature of this series has been its solidarity and teamwork. At number one, Bobby Schwartz from Eastbourne, such a great team man. And his partner, Dennis Segalos from Wolverhampton, but a former Ipswich favourite who knows every inch of this track. Number three, young Lance King from Cradley Heath. And a feature of this series, again, has been his teamwork with his partner, number four, John Cook, an Ipswich rider. So he'll be familiar with conditions out there today. Number five, Sean Moran from Sheffield, world long track champion, a maximum man around Ipswich in the test match here last year, partnering Sam Ermolenko, tall, lanky pool pirate in his second season. He really puts himself around this lad. Their reserves, number seven, Rick Miller from Coventry, and coming in for his first test cap, Robert Fetzing from Wolverhampton. And the crowd certainly have packed in here to Foxhall Heath for this, the fourth test match with the Americans 2-1 up and in the knowledge that the Americans have never ever lost a test match here. Just to remind you that in 1981 the fourth test match finished 52-44 to the state siders. In 82 the third test 66-42 and last year it was exactly the same score, 66-42. So the Americans very much at home in East Anglia. Heat one coming up with the top pairings, the opening partnerships for both sides in contention. On the inside there we have Chris Morton in red for England. Next to him Bobby Schwartz, the American captain in the white helmet. Grid three has Michael Lee, top scorer for England in the third test at Cradley. He'll be wearing blue. And on the outside Dennis Segalos in the yellow and black helmet for the USA. He was their top scorer at Cradley with 14 points. So there are the two top scorers, two world-class riders. Of course, number three in the world last year. Sigalos in the frame in Los Angeles. Here we go for heat number one, and Lee is impatient. Again, they come the start of and Lee's got a flyer. Lee away, and so is Morton. And it's the English pairing who show, and that is a surprise. Sigalos comes through into third place. And what a start for England with Lee in front. Morton is second. Sigalos is third. And the referee, Frank Ebden is not having it, he is stopping the race. He could not have been happy with that start. Well, let's have another look at it again and see what the problem was. Now, were they all standing still when he pressed the button? It certainly looked that way, and it looked as though Lee got a fair, clear start there. And it's difficult to imagine what was going on through the mind of Frank Ebden. He wasn't happy with the start, and it may well have robbed England. And it could well be that he was annoyed about the infringement by Lee earlier. He pushed the tape, and it could be that he was excluding Lee. Certainly, he got away cleanly enough there. But the tapes were pushed before the tapes were actually released. And we have controversy right at the start of this fourth test match. Coming straight into the action, what a moment to make your first test appearance for Richard Knight. Number seven coming in for Michael Lee, excluded controversially for tape charging by the referee Frank Ebden. He is a no-nonsense official. But that set the crowd buzzing here. The revised lineup then for Heat 1 has Chris Morton on the inside in red. Next to him, Bobby Schwartz in white. Grid 3, Richard Knight coming in for his first international appearance at senior level. And on the outside, Dennis Segalos in yellow and black. The Americans were left at the tapes at the first time of asking. This is Knight in blue. What a moment for him. Join Ipswich from Milden Hall during the winter. Lives in Ely. And he comes into the action. Heat one. And Morton get away again. 
and this time they are away and again it's Morton who gets clear and Knight's made a ball run up to the first corner as well and squeezed out Sigalos. So it is Morton in front, Schwartz is second, Knight is third, Sigalos at the back there is a surprise. And Sigalos will try hard and so will Schwartz as they come out around the first lap here and it's switch. And well it is something of a sensation here because Morton going away in front, Schwartz looking back for his partner. If uh, Knight can come through and keep out Sigalos, that will be some test for him. Schwartz might be slowing down to try and bring through his partner. And yes, he is, he's looking for him. And so, Sigalos trying to get around the outside and busting a gut. And Schwartz slows it down, terrific team tactics. It hasn't worked though. Into the last lap around here at Ipswich, 300 metres the track. And Knight has lost his helmet. Kyle Schwartz again looking back. I don't think Sigalos is going to get up. And that's a surprise right at the top of this test match. Over the line, Morton. Second place is Schwartz. Knight holds on there bravely for third place. So England go into an early lead. Heat two coming up. An encouraging start for the Lions there. 4 2 up as we look at the lineups for the second heat. And it will be for England. Paul Woods coming in for the first time in this series from Eastbourne. A real tiger, this lad. And a genuine tiger partnering him. John Tiger Louis, the veteran at 43, former Ipswich skipper for the Americans. Well, this is a really fine pair of team riders, Lance King and John Cook. They really have a tremendous understanding. We've seen that in previous tests we've televised. Looking across the lineup on the inside in white, it's Lance King. Next to him in blue, John Tiger Louis for England. Grid three has John Cook, home track specialist, and on the outside, Paul Woods, lanky figure in the red helmet color, coming into the series for the first time after a, a run of impressive performances down there with Eastbourne on the south coast. England 4-2 up. This is a new pairing for them against a very experienced pairing for the Americans. Heat number two, away they go, and up to the corner, it looks like King and Louis. King and Louis get away, and Louis switches back on the inside of Lance King in third place, it is John Cook. So it's America first and third at the moment, and here comes Cook around the outside of Louis. And Louis trying hard to hold him back, and might just do so. King in front, the battle for second place between Louis and John Cook, who almost overcooks the corner, if you'll pardon the pun. is a real flyer, won't give in, and Gordon McKay, well, he's all over the place, he might be through on the inside here, now he's trying the inside run on Louis, and they're standing on no ceremony, he goes through on the inside, Tiger Louis gets a knock, and he's the leader up front, Lance King, and this American partnership there, match winning partnership in the first test, and Cook is making signals to whom I don't know, but he's in second place, the long way clear is Lance King, in second place. So it's going to be a maximum heat win for the Americans. Cook signals as he goes over the line. So that pushes the Americans in front with two gone. Quite a sensation down here, Michael, because you were threatening to quit the meeting. You've got changed and then got changed back yeah, again. Yeah, well, I had a chat with John Berry, the promoter here at Ipswich, and Carl Glover, the team manager of, of England. But I just feel that strongly that Speedway is being ruined by the new regulations through starting and, and the way referees are treating it now you know i mean i touched the tapes once in the first race and there's a lot of pressure there when, when you you can imagine four riders sat there first race we're all under a lot of tension you know if they can't understand that then where do we stand you know i mean i'm just jarred off with the whole deal at the moment but you're going to ride again oh you know i've got to ride it's england you we want to beat the americans to, I, see... i'll go out there and do my best but i'm just really jarred off with the whole thing at the moment the way speedway is going you know i think it's being ruined by regulations that's all i've got to say on it there's the score with two heats gone america seven england five and we look at the pairings for heat number three it will be Dave Jessup, the experienced skipper of England, with his young partner Kelvin Tatum from Wimbledon, in against the American Sean Moran, a track specialist, and their new boy this year, Sam Ermalenko. Heat three then on the inside, Jessup, and England will look to his starting ability to set them up here. Next to him, the tall figure of Sam Ermalenko, a real harem scarum character from Pool Pirates in yellow grid. Three has Kelvin Tatum, a lot on his young shoulders, inexperienced at this level, and on the outside, Sean Moran, the world long track champion who peeled off an untroubled 18-point maximum here in the corresponding test 12 months ago. Heat three, we'll look for Jessup and Moran possibly to show up to the first quarter there on the swift uh, front runners. 
we go. He gets it away from the inside of Moran from the outside. Up to the corner. Who's got to drop? It will be Moran. Moran in front. Second place, Jesse Irvalenko is third. Taking box squeezed out at the first turn. And Irvalenko took a big dive around the outside. Like a great handful of throttle there. Almost came unstuck. Pulled away in heat number three with Moran again, showing his liking for this race in at the 300 metre foxhole he bowl. Jessup is second, Irvalenko pushing hard on him, takes him at the back. And this is Sean Moran, who won the World Long Track Championship with a broken leg or just a, over a broken leg. The battle begins to be joined for second place. That these Americans, they do not give up, and Irvalenko will buzz around the outside of Jessup, and Jessup cannot afford to be complacent into the last corner. And I think Jessup's going to be taken, and that sheer enthusiasm and encouragement for Irvalenko. He didn't give up, he kept going on the last lap, and that's been the difference between the English and the Americans in this series. The Americans just keep pegging away, they take maximum points there from Heat 3. Three heats gone, the American banner's high there. Six points in front, there is the score, 12-6. As we move into heat number four, and the lineups four there, you can see Paul Woods and John Louis for England. For America, their number one partnership, Bobby Schwartz and Dennis Segalos. Across the line then in heat four, on the inside, Bobby Schwartz in white. Next to him, Paul Woods in red. Grid three, we'll just have a look across there. It will be Dennis Segalos who recorded a last place in his opening ride. He'll be anxious to make amends for that. There's Sigalos just back to the left of our picture. And on the outside, John Louis, who should know every inch of this Foxwell Heath circuit, having started his career here and been such a part of their success story. Back in the squad, now rides with Kingsley just along the way in East Anglia. Still a formidable opponent, although maybe his better days have gone. Still very lively, though. Louis on the outside. Here we go, 6-12 for scoring. America's favourite. This is heat number four. You see the awful long time before they got this away they go. There's a pretty close run up to the first corner. It is Schwartz in front and Woods has didn't. A brilliant corner there and locked back on the inside. Woods leads it in second place at Schwartz. In third place it is Sigalos. And that's the two Eastbourne teammates who are battling it out in front. And again the referee is going to stop it. And this really is getting to be just a trifle farcical. The referee stopped the first heat and it looks like he's going to exclude Paul Woods for, it, for touching the tape. Let's have a look again. And let's have a look at it. Did he touch the tapes? Well, I would not care to put my life on it. It looks like Woods is coming out and that is mystifying. So heat four for the second time of asking with Jeremy Doncaster coming in for the aggrieved Paul Woods and it would appear he had a case there. It must have been an infinitesimal touch if he did touch the tapes and referee Frank Ebden is getting uh, more discussion and controversy here than Clive Thomas on a good day. There is Jeremy Doncaster coming into the action for his first test appearance. We'll look across the line for Heat 4 on the inside Schwartz. Next to him, Doncaster. Grid 3, Sigalos on the outside. John Louis away this time, and it's Schwartz again, and Sigalos going with him. Schwartz in front, Sigalos, and Doncaster trying hard to tiger between the two Americans. They look for each other. They know exactly where they are, and it's the old Californian one-two here. And they'll stick together like blue. The England pairing have got a lot of work to do now. They're going to split these two two of the great team men, they're understanding, virtually telepathic, they're looking for each other. And I really think that Jeremy Doncaster will need a steamroller to get between them. An E-type steamroller at that. So England, after that encouraging start in the first heat, and Chris Morton won it, and then he felt a hammer from the Americans, and Doncaster almost ran over the back of Schwartz there. And Schwartz looked back and in one of his famous Muhammad Ali glares. This is the last lap. And the Americans are beginning to run away with it. Over the line, Sigalos will win it. Second place, Schwartz. Third there was Doncaster. And that puts the Americans 10 in front. And England really have a mountain to climb already.
Well, Carl Berber, first of all, what about these referee decisions? He seems to be very, very keen on the job, but, I mean, we were warned before the meeting started. You touch the tapes, you're out. The man made it perfectly clear, even from heat one, and so we, we can't really argue about it. If he says a thing and he carries it out, then we can't argue about it. I think you were a bit relieved that Michael Lee changed his mind in the dressing room. He got changed and said he was storming out of the meeting at one stage. Yeah, Michael sometimes goes off like a, a bottle of pop, but he, he's realised he's, he's a sensible lad. He's come back, there's no problem. Well, he made a very good start to the meeting, but suddenly it's all going wrong very quickly for England. Yeah, the, the referee decision seems to be upsetting us more than the Americans, but we've got to get back into it. I mean, it's just, there's no good arguing about it or even worrying about it. We've got to get stuck back in and get on with it. And let's have a look again, the evidence on television, you can see Paul Wood just touches the tapes there. It was a long time before the start, but the referee, Frank Ebden, sticking to his job in the most Corinthian way and takes him out. So that leaves the score there with America now 10 points up with four heats completed. And we're coming on to heat number five. Let's look at the lineup for heat five. There are the pairings and uh, on the grid it will be Dave Jessup on the inside. Next to him, we have Lance King, grid three is Calvin Tatum. On the outside, it is John Cook. King and Cook recorded a maximum in their opening heat. Jessup, it has to be said, was a little complacent, allowed himself to be caught on the last lap. He'll be anxious to atone for that. Calvin Tatum, well, this young man, 20 years old, ex-public schoolboy, a sensation at Wimbledon last year. Really has an awful lot on his plate in at this level so early in his career. There is Jessup, David Jessup, of course, who was born in Ipswich, now rides just along the way at King's Lynn. And DJ, now 31 years old, leading rider in the world for so long. A bit unlucky in world finals, we've seen that so many times. Let's just hope he can get his act together here because England need his stability as we come into Heat 5. Go, and up to the corner it's Jessup and Tatum's got away as well so it's England one and two King going through on the inside of trying to find the line and Cook after him and Cook coming around the outside and Tatum has pressure now from both the Americans Jessup in front and the Americans will really duck and dive to try and win their way through we saw this at Cradley against the England pairing and Jessup's allowed Tatum to go on and it's getting terribly terribly tight in there King has split them coming through hard now is Cook it's still Tatum in front Jessup has allowed himself to go from first to last and here comes Cook, uh, rather King down the inside of Tatum, and the Americans are so tenacious, they really have got the bit between their teeth, it is King in front, great race from the young Californian, Tatum still hanging on, I don't think Cook's finished yet either, going into the last lap, King in front, Tatum now under pressure from John Cook, and Jessup at the back, and here comes Cook again, and Cook will try down the outside, he will not give up this lad, trying down the inside, he's really hit it from every angle, and over the line it is King, second place is Tatum, doing well to hang on, third place Cook, and the Americans showing all their determination and national pride there, they were left behind, they split them up, they took them apart, and really young Tatum did well to hang on to split them in the final analysis. Coming up to heat six, there's the score, and England will now look to their top pairing of Chris Morton and the disgruntled, but possibly reinvigorated Michael Lee, to stop the rot here in heat six. There are the partnerships. Let's have a look at the way they peel off on the grid on the inside. It's Sean Moran, unbeaten and untroubled in his opening ride. Next to him, Michael Lee. He must be careful not to touch the tapes. Grid three has Sam Romalenko, who had a real fighting battle in second place in his opening ride. On the outside, Chris Morton, who has indeed been England's only race winner. He is on the outside here. And this one could well be something very special because we have four guys in here who will give nothing away in heat six with the americans leading 21-9 and england beginning to look for inspiration up on the inside moran's got a terrific start so too is morton from the outside Romalenko has gone with them as well and lee has stopped lee has stopped the americans are in front and the race continues and we wonder what is the matter with michael lee but the americans are running rampant in front, it is Moran. Second place, Ermolenko. Third place is Morton. And this is getting dangerously like an annihilation. And this laughing lead, really unhappy. The start will clean it up. And it was Ermolenko who really put himself around, as we know this lad does at the first turn. And he comes off, is it the bike or is it him? We'll have to find out afterwards. Morton is closing up, less than trying to 
get back into the picture. He's got a lot of work to do as Moran and Ermolenko just coolly peel off down the back straight. This is the last lap. Unless Morton can do something very, very explosive, it's going to be another maximum heat win for the Americans. Moran wins it. Second Ermolenko, third Morton. And here is Michael Lee, and that's a sad picture which somehow sums up England's hopes and expectations here at Ipswich. Back in the pits with his head down. So there is the score after six heats coming into heat seven, and England manager Carl Glover desperately beginning to gamble, bringing in Richard Knight in his first test match at senior level, coming in for Dave Jessup, who has been sadly out of touch. There is the lineup for heat seven, with Schwartz and Segalos, the top American pairing. Looking across from the inside, 487 Knight in red. Next to him, Schwartz. It should be a white helmet colour. Next to him in grid three, it is Kelvin Tatum. And on the outside, Dennis Igalos. And this really is a very young, untried English pairing. Knight only just up from the National League, from Milden Hall. He's only been riding for it since the start of the season. Tatum in only his second full season in racing. In against the pair who have won the World Pairs Championship. And it really is throwing the Christians in against the Lions here in Heat 7. Let's see what the kids can do. And it looks like Schwartz may have touched it. Yeah, Schwartz certainly had a go. And away they go. The red light is on. Now, who is he excluded this time? It is Schwartz. Schwartz must come out for touching the tapes. And the referee is having absolutely no nonsense at all. Now, Bobby Schwartz is a very explosive customer. He's coming back round, and I'm sure that Boogaloo will have something to say for himself. Heat 7, the revised lineup then with two reserves in now. Let's have a look across from the inside is Richard Knight coming in for Bobby Schwartz. It is Rick Miller, Coventry, reserve former actor, and a good-looking lad too, and who can produce the goods. Grid 3 has Kelvin Tatum, who is quick from the tapes, and on the outside, Dennis Sugalos, far and away the most experienced campaigner in Heat 7. And the lads then really know the message from referee Frank Ebden. Um, this test match, it must be said, it has been the hidden man, the referee, who has been the headline snatcher. Here we go then for heat seven. And it's a clean break, and Tatum it is who gets clear. Or is it Miller from the inside? It's Miller and Tatum coming around, and here comes Sigalos after young Tatum. And Tatum really does get away quickly. Now he's under pressure from Sigalos in third place. It is Miller. Sigalos will lock back on the inside and try and drive a hole under him. And Tatum did well, moved across to cover the move. And it's a fair old race as inside desperately trying to push a hole into Miller. He was right and here is the battle up front. We've got a fair speedway race here. Battle front and back. And the English kids are battling, it must be said. Here comes Cigars, clever piece of tactics, and Tatum holds him off again. And again, Cigars, surely he'll go through this time. Tatum was aware that he'd left the hole. And it just really was sheer experience at top level, which saw Dennis Sigalos in front. Such a quality rider, so clean, it has to be said. Going a massively fair line. Sigalos then winning. He said the lot after the battle. He wins in second place is Tatum. Third place is Miller. And the Americans go even further ahead. Well, there is the man who has caused more discussion on the terraces here at Foxhall Heath and the Racing. The referee, Frank Ebden who warned the riders about tape touching and has absolutely stuck to the letter of the law. But my word, there's going to be some discussion about his emphatic enforcement of the law after this test match. It really has been the feature of it. Well, there's the score, and it's England, really, who've come off worse from his Corinthian referee. And the Americans have taken 28 points in the last six heats. There's the lineup for Heat 8. We're wondering what Michael Lee will do. He said... Well, whenever he tries to race, he gets excluded. Looking across, we have on the inside John Cook, next to him Lee. Grid three has Lance King, who's unbeaten, and on the outside Chris Morton. And, well, what will Michael Lee do now? This is he taking, and Lee has got a flyer. An absolute flyer up to the first corner. Cook has gone with him, moves him out, and Morton has come round on the inside again. It is being stopped. Oh, really... This is quite astonishing. There is Lee. He got a flyer, whether he touched the tapes or not, perhaps our replay will show. 
Let's have a look at it. Now, was he stood still? Was there any tape touching? Well, he got a flyer. I don't think he touched the tapes, but he anticipated it. There doesn't seem to be an exclusion light on. And Lee is shaking his head here. There's Ray Chinnery, the track marshal, and Michael Lee just cannot believe what's going on. So there is the score in all the disputes and debate. We are forgetting that the Americans are running away with this one after seven races. They've taken 28 points from the last six heats, four maximums and two four twos. They really have taken England apart amid all the controversy. King has been quite brilliant, the rider in white here in grid three. He's won his two races, both times from the back. So the lineup again on the inside, John Cook. Next to him, Michael Lee, who must be thinking he's sitting on a barrel of dynamite. Grid three has King on the outside. Morton, here we go for what he's taking again. Lee has anticipated beautifully. Up to the corner it is Lee, and Cook and Cook has moved around, and Morton is coming high around the outside, and Morton has ridden a perfect couple of first corners. Tremendous Cook and Morton together, and Cook having none of it. And uh, we look at the back, where is the battle going to come from? Morton has swung back inside. Beautiful, tremendous race. Lee is at the back. It's Morton and Cook up front, and Morton goes clear. In third place it is King. And this Morton is the one Englishman who looks capable of getting among the Yanks. Again, Lee has pulled out. But, well, we really must look at the bikes up front because Cook, again, is having a tremendous battle here with Chris Morton. Here is that battle. Morton has been England's only race winner. And he's got John Cook right on his back wheel. Down his machinery into the last lap, just 328 yards here around Foxhall Heath. And little Chris Morton, pretty well race from Cheshire. He's the only man, really unbarried by the Americans. He wins, he takes second place is Cook, third place is King, and Lee again has pulled out of the action. There is Michael Lee, and he clearly is unhappy with life, but really, he ought to buckle down and get on with the job. He's doing England no good at the moment. And this is the one cheerful little customer who is. England's really brightest spark here today, their only consolation, really, Chris Morton, their only race winner, and he took heat eight there did it the hard way as well. Well, there is the score with the Americans beginning to disappear over the horizon. And the heat number nine has those pairings. Paul Woods and John Louis for England. Sean Moran and Sam Ermolenko, who have been impressive. They've got two maximum heat wins in their first two rides. So across the line for heat nine on the inside, John Louis. Next to him in white, Sean Moran. Two race wins so far. Grid three has Paul Woods, who was looking very good before the referee stopped his last race before tape touching and on the outside it is Sam Ermolenko who's a rough tough character who when he misses out at the first corner comes charging through so heat nine and England really must start their fight back there is Woods and he'll be very careful not to touch the tapes this time in heat number nine away they go and it is Moran and Woods has got away as well so Moran leads it where is Woods Woods coming hard around the boards he has got uh, lost there and Ermolenko again a really clever piece of curb crawling there. It wasn't exactly crawling. So it's America in front. And Moran looking back for Ermolenko as now Louis comes through. And the English pairing are really having a go, but making very little ground. Well, here is the battle for the odd points with Moran all the way in front. If the Englishmen just sorted themselves out and made up their minds who was going to attack Ermolenko, it might be better for them. It's Woods who gets through, and Woods will have a go. It's a big, brave South Coast lad, and he'll have a double here, and he may well just to split them. They're all tightened up there as Moran moves across to try and keep out Woods, and this is a brave body ride by Paul Woods, who would not be deterred. And now Louis is going around the outside of Ermolenko, and the English are fighting hard. In front of his Moran. Louis got him up on the last corner, Moran wins it. Second place, Woods, and that was a really gritty performance from him. Third place, Ermolenko. Louis at the back. The Americans go further in front, but that was quite some speed work. Well, there is the situation at the halfway stage with the Americans clearly 20 points in front and looking good. In team lead over England in the fourth speedway test at Ipswich, and they're only 30 points away from clinching the match and the series. But as you've seen, controversy all the way today, with riders being excluded after touching the tapes at the start. And the man responsible for those decisions, referee Frank Ebden, is now talking to Gary Newborn. 
Well, referee Frank Ebden, there's a, there's a lot of bad feeling against you in the pits from some of the riders who've been excluded. They think that uh, you're being too harsh. Well, I can't comment on bad feeling, and of course I'm not allowed to comment on any decisions. All I can say is that it's made clear to all the riders before the start what the rules are. That is, they've been warned that if they touch the tapes, then they'll be excluded. And of course, there have only been a couple of riders who've done that. The rest have remained still. And of course, we've had fair starts as a result, but I can't discuss anything else. No, but, but could you explain, as far as the rules are concerned, I mean, it's not very often in speedway meetings where you see so many, so many times early on where riders are excluded for just touching the tapes like that, uh, without well, breaking the, them. Yes, as I say, I can't um, discuss the individual decisions, no. but the rules have, of course, been changed this year. Yes. And this year, the rule is that uh, if someone touches the tapes once, they're liable to be excluded. If they touch them twice, they will be excluded. Uh, it's very difficult to have a situation where you're warning some riders for doing it and excluding other riders for doing it. So it's made clear. They're all given a clear warning before the start. And uh, in fact, uh, of course, you've only seen two riders out of all of them who have been excluded for doing it. But we have to be consistent right the way through. 17.37 the score. This is heat 10. And the pairings show that the England manager, Carl Glover, has now thrown in his reserve, Richard Knight, who hasn't ridden badly at all, coming in for the clearly disillusioned Michael Lee. He is in blue. Let's look across the line for Heat 10. On the inside, Bobby Schwartz from the USA, who has already had one tape exclusion for touching the starting tapes. Grid 2 has Richard Knight in blue coming in for Michael Lee, who seems to be totally fed up with proceedings. Grid 3 has Dennis Sigalos, who's had a last and two wins. And on the outside, England's bonniest battler, Chris Morton, with two wins to his credit. Here we go for Heat 10. And away this time, and Morton is rearing and pouring the air. It's the Americans in front, and Knight trying to go down the inside of Schwartz, but Schwartz is aware of him, and Morton really had the most terrible first corner there. And was left 30 minutes today. Can he possibly get back up on the American Sigalos and Schwartz? And Schwartz is into some trouble. Richard Knight, a hang of battle there. And uh, Knight has moved through into second place, and Schwartz can't be happy about that. And he'll come straight back under him, and Schwartz going hard under Knight, down on the bottom corner. Sigalos is in front of Schwartz, and Knight locks together for second place. There is the battle for second place, you can see it, with Schwartz having been passed, comes back and repasses. And Knight now will dive on him, down the line. And it is terribly tight, and Knight might just have the drop. Has ridden a fair old race and Schwartz and Knight having a ding dong for this second place here. And England really can't complain that the youngsters haven't done their job. Cigars will win it. Knight doing awfully well to split them. He's in second place, third place, Schwartz, Morton at the back. And America still go further ahead. Well, Richard Knight here in the blue helmet colour showing the kind of spirit that one or two of his more senior and illustrious teammates might show. Here he goes after Bobby Schwartz. Schwartz drifting out. You can see Knight coming through. Sigalos looks over his shoulder and sees his partner in some trouble. And Knight is in front here. And to go into the last lap, he has been passed and repassed. But this time, a piece of overtaking is conclusive. Schwartz trying again the inside run. But Knight is aware of him. And this for a lad in his first test match really is a great heart of performance. Michael Lee, you clearly had enough going home. Yeah, I calmed down a bit now and thought about it. Um, you know, what can I say? It's kind of after those two incidents, it's just finished my enthusiasm for racing for the day, to be honest. Has it finished your career, though? I don't think it's finished my career. I hope not, but certainly... It's made me think twice about Speedway for the time being, you know, I mean, it's just getting so ridiculous now with the way the referees are handling the sport and the public agrees. So, you know, I have public around me saying the same thing. Um, and it's the same with every rider and everyone in the pits. Everyone's of the same opinion. Referees are ruining the sport. You've already been suspended, Michael, by your club pool. Um, this presumably could lead to another suspension as well, couldn't it? Well, my, as I said, my feelings on Speedway are quite strong at the moment. Admittedly, I, I've been a bad boy in the past, but if I'm going to be punished for it and punished for it, then I'd rather get out of it before anything more happens, you know. So you could be quitting then? I could even quit, you know. I'm going to go home and have a serious think about it and see what I come with, you know. I just don't know yet. I want to have a think about it first. It's been a sad day for you? Very much so, you know, and it's a sad day for Speedway as well in general.
And it's a pretty sad old day for England too, with the scores standing 41-19 with 10 heats completed. Here is the lineup for heat 11. You can see it's Paul Woods who showed a lot of fights in his last ride to split the Americans in there with Jeremy Doncaster replacing John Louis. And we have this uh, fiery American pairing of Lance King and John Cook, who we have seen are quite fearless in their determination and they do get stuck in. So heat number 11 and England are looking for miracles if they are to get back into this test match. Woods on the inside. Looks like the Americans have got the drop. Cook has made the start. He's looking for his partner, and uh, King is very really wrapped up on the boards, allowing both the Englishmen into second and third places. He's got that to second, and now here comes King around the outside, and he must split him up, and he's got Ryan Woods going hard now after Doncaster, and Woods will battle, and it's all tightening up as Cook looks back for his partner, and King has moved up into third place. Now Doncaster, the local Ipswich lad, He's seeing he might have an opportunity, he's got his it to his teammate in front of him. And it really is getting tight out there. And Woods is coming back, he won't give up. And again, we have a classic speedway race as Doncaster now comes under. Cook, and Cook is suddenly aware that he's in danger and he cannot go on slowing it down. But he has done so, he's getting very, very close indeed. Woods comes into the picture, so too now does King. And King comes around the outside of Jeremy Doncaster. And it's brilliant team tactics from the Americans, absolutely Superb team tactics, Cook slowed the race down while King came up next to him and over the line they go and that was a maximum heat win and one really for the record book. Well there it is again, look you can see that Cook on the outside is looking back, he's aware where his partner is and you can see that Doncaster, there's Woods who's still nosing into the pitches now, Cook is back in last place here and he levels up, he gets around the outside here and again Cook is slowing it down. He's aware suddenly that Doncaster, as his helmet cutter, flies off. He's aware that he's there now. He comes right across on him. It looks like Doncaster might just have got the drop. He moves across and squeezes him, puts his leg out and stops him. My word, it almost stops him with his leg. And that just really seemed to disconcert Doncaster. And King riding bravely around the boards has just about got the legs down here on the last lap. And there are the Americans up front. And that really was quite superb. Well, the United States extended their lead in heats 12 and 13. One of their riders even found time to leave the stadium. Dennis Segalos, amazing thing. You've been home a few minutes ago to your house in Ipswich to collect this bike. That's right, yeah. My other bike was showing a bit of shavings, you know, so that's a sign that it might blow up. So I rode my back a bike in that last race, and I won it, and it was going really good, so now we're going to try this one. It's a bit unusual for people to nip home, though, during a meeting, isn't it? Yeah, that's what's handy about, well, when, when I used to ride here, I could just nip home, but now from Wolverhampton, it's a bit harder. <laughs> Well, there's the score with 13 heats gone. It's a massacre. The Americas, Americans 30 points in front. The lineup for heat 14. On the inside there, we have Lance King. Next to him, Dave Jessup in red. Grid three has John Cook. On the outside is his Calvin Tatum. Heat 14. We just uh, give you a nudge and remind you, no team has ever run up 70 points in this test series. 69 is the record. But the Americans could do it here. Uh, as Cook gets away, Jessup's in second place, Tatum's been dropped. And now can Lance King attack Dave Jessup? And Jessup has looked vulnerable, it has to be said. And it looks like King has got back him already. Into the second lap, Cook looking back for King, and King has leveled off. And Jessup has been relegated to third place. It's been really desperately disappointing performance from the England skipper. Cook and King and John Cook, the cowboy who was warned during the third test match and played in about Mono Wheeling, which his manager, John Scott, quite reasonably said was this match in exuberance. Before this test match, Scott warned his lads to cut the showmanship, which really is a shame and again indicative that maybe the speaking authorities aren't aware of what the public really want. They love these spectacle merchants from the States who are absolutely taking England apart here. Over the line, Cook wins it, second place King. Jessup disappointingly in third place and that takes the Americans up to 59 points they're home and dry they've wrapped up the series and they yet may go on to record a record score in this test matches well there is the skipper Bobby Schwartz who swore that the Americans would ride inspired under his command he'll be very happy with that score here's Gary Newbon with him 
Well, Bobby, with four heats to go, you've won very, very easily and won the series as well. Yeah, it's great, Gary. I just uh, feel a bit sorry for the English sides at the moment. They must be a bit down, and it really helps when you have the ball rolling like we have today. So I still look forward to having a good meeting at pool on Wednesday. Besides the Sheffield test, though, you've looked in convincing form against the England team this season. Yeah, well, the boys are keen this year to, to reverse what happened last year. We've just done that, so we're happy with it. Let's just hope that the rest of the season goes well for each and every one individually. England, though, unsettled by the refereeing, it seems to me. I would think so. I think the referee was... Um, a bit funny today. I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with it. He did tell us he was going to exclude us for touching the tapes. Therefore, he did what he said he was going to do. I think he's been a bit strict in some of the tape exclusions, but here we are at Speedway. Well done, anyway, Bobby. Your team riding's been very good this season, as far as the USA is concerned. Yeah, that's about all that's been going good for me this season, but I think I'll, I'll get it all together soon enough. And with Sean Moran going on to complete a brilliant maximum of 18 points, the Americans clinched the Test Series 3-1 with a massive score of 72 points to 36, the biggest last weekend.